pleasure to hand over to you uh, this uh, field development plan, which has a value of 10.5 trillion dollars on these two pages. And so I will uh, sign it for you. And uh, you can keep it. It's a present, but it's also the future of our company in Suriname. Great commitment. And we provide the best for people, all the people of Suriname. Thank you, Mr. President, for your support. Thank you very much. The president will now make his uh, statement. May I have your attention for the president? Thank you, master of uh, ceremony. Uh, I'll ask uh, the CEO of Total Energy and also the CEO of uh, APF Corporation to give me the permission to make this statement in the Dutch language for our people who are very excited and they are all waiting for this moment. Gaftawezen, maar in bijzonder het volk van Suriname. Vandaag is het een historische dag voor Suriname, voor alle Surinamers, voor jullie allemaal is het een historische dag, een belangrijke dag. Een dag die onze toekomst mede zal bepalen en dat vereist nationale inzet om aan de opbouw van ons geliefd Suriname te gaan werken. Ja, samenwerken. Ik heb daar net van de CEO van Total Energies, de heer Patrick Kouyané, in het bijzijn van de vertegenwoordigers van EPA Corporation en de CEO van Staat Solidair Anand Jagesen, en de totale regering van Suriname en de leden van de Nationale Assemblée het document ontvangen waarin bevestigd wordt dat eerder genoemde bedrijven hun finale investeringsbesluit hebben genomen. Het volk van Suriname heeft al lang uitgekeken naar dit moment. En vandaag vertegenwoordigt hetgeen Eindpunt. Maar het is de start van een intensief traject van enorme arbeid, partnerschap en gezamenlijke inzet van een ieder. De bekendmaking van het finale investeringsbesluit betekent dat vanaf vandaag er geen onzekerheid hoeft te bestaan over het feit dat we met internationale partners de exploitatie van olie- en gasfondsen op commerciële wijze in blok 58 ter hand zullen nemen. De vereiste investeringen met het doel voor ogen zullen wij starten en miljarden Amerikaanse dollar vertegenwoordigen en de eerste olieproductie wordt al in de eerste helft van 2028 verwacht. Er zijn sinds 2019 vijf fondsen gedaan in blok 58. De twee belangrijkste oliefondsen, Sapakara Zout en Krabdagu, hebben samen Reserves van ongeveer 750 miljoen vaten. Deze reserves zullen gecombineerd ontwikkeld worden tot het Gramorgo olieveld. In de komende vier jaren zullen ongeveer 32 putten worden geboord, onderzeese installaties en pijpleidingen worden aangelegd en het drijvend productieplatform wordt gebouwd. Met dit alles gaat een investering van meer dan 10 miljard. Amerikaanse dollar, en u heeft het al gehoord, de CEO van Total Energy heeft gezegd, meer dan 1 miljard dollar is alleen voor local content ontwikkeling. De operationele activiteiten voor het boren van de putten zullen vanuit Suriname plaatsvinden. Wel, let wel, vanuit Suriname plaatsvinden. Dat zal een grote spin-off betekenen voor de Surinaamse economie. Vanwege de aankoop 
van de lokale arbeid, goederen en diensten, dat noemen we met een mooi woord local content. En ons land zal dus in deze fase kunnen profiteren van de kapitaalinvestering van het Grand Morgue project. De naam Grand Morgue symboliseert de nieuwe kans om een mooie Suriname te creëren. Dit is een game changer. Suriname is straks 50 jaar een republiek. En als land hebben we veel, ja, veel uitdagingen gehad op sociaal, politiek, maatschappelijk en economisch gebied. De kans die Grand Morgu een nieuwe morgen van Boe, Tamara, ons biedt, zullen we met beide handen grijpen. Wij individueel als dienstverleners, producenten, importeurs gaan heel hard moeten werken om integraal onderdeel te worden van een nieuwe industrie. Onze local content gaat gefaciliteerd moeten worden en dat kan alleen optimaal wanneer het samenspel tussen de regering en het bedrijfsleven effectief is. Hiervoor zal de regering binnenkort verder voorstellen over doen. Nadat de olieproductie vanaf 2028 op gang is gekomen, zal het grootste deel van de netto inkomsten naar de staat Suriname gaan. De inkomsten van Suriname bestaan uit royalties, westolie en belasting. Ondertussen zijn de eerste voordelen reeds zichtbaar. En ik ben Total Energy en partners erkentelijk voor de ondersteuning die zal worden gegeven aan een aantal urgente voorzieningen in de gezondheidssector. En eerder is al bekendgemaakt, minister van Volksgezondheid, u zult straks namelijk de financiering ook in ontvangst nemen van twee belangrijke instellingen die onder druk staan in de samenleving. En dat is uh, namelijk moeder en kind uh, project bij Academisch Ziekenhuis en bij Slans Hospitaal ter waarde van 13 miljoen Amerikaanse dollar. Het gaat om renovatie, upgrading en aankoop van noodzakelijke apparatuur. Inmiddels zijn we als regering begonnen het welvaart- en stabilisatiefonds nader uit te werken en de meest optimale regelgeving ter zake vast te stellen. De inkomsten uit deze en mogelijk ook andere sectoren zullen besteed worden aan de nationale economische ontwikkeling en een voorafgesteld deel zal gereserveerd worden in het eerder genoemd fonds ten behoeve van de toekomstige generaties, maar ook voor het diversifiëren van onze economie. En daardoor hebben we onze toekomst zeker verduurzaamd. De gelden zullen transparant en apolitiek beheerd moeten worden met het afnemen van de regels en voorzieningen van goed bestuur. Good governance. Terwijl dit moment voor ons allen van historische waarde is, moet benadrukt worden dat de doelstelling van de regering om onze economie te diversifiëren niet alleen gericht is op de olie en gas en de hieraan gerelateerde industrieën. We zien de economie als een geheel en zullen derhalve ook de verdere ontwikkeling van de agrarische sector, de visserij en het toerisme, de dienstverleersector, etc. ter hand nemen. Zoals vele keren eerder gezegd, Suriname zal er alles aan doen om deze carbonegatieve status van ons niet te verliezen. We zijn carbonegatief en we zullen dat ook blijven, ook met die oil en gas production. We zullen daarom heel nauw letten op de productiemethoden die gehanteerd zullen worden en aandringen op een zo milieuvriendelijke exploratie en exploitatie met een afneem van de internationale standaarden en regelgeving. Speciale aandacht zal ook worden gegeven aan de maatregelen die getroffen moeten worden om natuurrampen te voorkomen. Onze marine biologische diversiteit is niet alleen een belangrijk onderdeel van het ecosysteem, maar ook een bron van inkomsten. Indachtig de effecten van het besluit tot ontwikkeling van de olie- en gasindustrie door Total Energies, EPA Corporation en Staatsolie NV heeft de regering tevens besloten zeer binnenkort een representatief nationaal platform op te richten welke ten doel zal hebben om de impact van olie- en gasindustrie en de optimale benutting van deze industrie naar de samenleving mede te helpen analyseren en daaromtrend de regering van advies te dienen. De productie, technische en financiële doelen en daaraan gerelateerde management zal voor wat betreft Suriname gedelegeerd zijn aan staatsolie en 
Wij gaan een gecommitteerd en sterk partnerschap aan met de twee internationale bedrijven onder begeleiding van onze nationale trotstaats voor de Suriname NV. Om deze investeringen te kunnen verantwoorden is vertrouwen en goed dialoog met alle belanghebbenden nodig. Wij verwachten dat alle belanghebbenden de goede, transparante en diepgaande samenwerking zullen voortzetten, welke de beste garantie voor een solide partnerschap in beide belang biedt. Ons beleid, en dat zal voor elke regering moeten gelden, is dat de levensstandaarden en welzijn van onze bevolking op een significant hoger niveau moet komen. Niet alleen overleven, maar een fijn leven kunnen leiden. Wij zullen ervoor zorgen dat deze welvaart bij elke burger terecht komt via het principe van leaving no one behind. Dat wij krachtig zullen verdedigen. Ik feliciteer het Surinaamse volk en alle betrokkenen met het realiseren van deze historische mijlpaal, welke substantieel een bijdrage zal leveren aan de duurzame groei en ontwikkeling in alle opzichten van onze economie en samenleving. Ik mag u allemaal bedanken en ik ga jullie vragen om mij te verexecuteren omdat ik een plaats moet maken voor de Nationale Assemblée om jaarreden uit te spreken. Maar er zal hierna direct een persconferentie plaatsvinden waarbij de drie bedrijven, Staas, Ori, ook Total Energy en EPA Corporation aanwezig zullen zijn om vragen te beantwoorden. CEO of Total Energy, Mr. Kouyane, and also CEO for MP, CEO of Stavroli. I just announced in Dutch that I have to leave for the Parliament, but I leave you behind to take all the difficult questions. But there will be no difficult. I think everything is quite clear up till now, but if there will be any questions from the press media, if you are willing to take those questions. I'll ask you permission uh, to give me the opportunity to leave, but before that, I'll give you the opportunity to make some small remarks. I should tell you, Grand Mogul, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And all of you, success, and may God bless you all.
established. The oil and gas sector has an important responsibility in protection and expansion of this habitat. We are committed to balancing prosperity with responsible development and investment in nature-based activities. The Morgu will remind us of this. Last, and maybe the most important one for the economically challenged country, Suriname, in the beautiful synchronicity, the words Grand Morgu also carries the meaning of a grand morning in Surinamese, signifying a new dawn and the promise of new beginnings. Today, we set the fundament for this Grand Morgu. The project has a logo, and the project's logo features a stylized sun rising over the sea horizon, seamlessly integrated with the image of the Grand Morgu fish. The rising sun embodies the promise of a new dawn. While the Grand Morgu represents enduring strength, resilience, inclusiveness, and the forward motion that characterizes this important project. And in case you are wondering, my friends of the press, we have a fact sheet that we will hand out after this uh, meeting. We will now proceed to the statements and the Q&A. As you know by now, behind the table, we have Mr. Anand Jagesar, CEO of Stats Oli, and Mr. Patrick Puyan, Chairman and CEO of Total Energies. Although Total Energies is the operator, APA Corporation has been in this block since 2015 and made the first discovery. In view hereof, we want to give APA Corporation the opportunity to make a brief statement. May I have your attention for Mr. Christman? I said earlier, you know, we entered Suriname in 2012 because we knew this country had great potential for oil and gas resources. In 2015, we picked up Block 58. Uh, throughout that whole time period, we worked very closely with Statsoli, and I have the great amount of respect for Statsoli. All of your uh, your members, your representatives, uh, we developed a great relationship. But in 2019, uh, we brought in Total, and uh, Total Energies was the right partner. Um, Patrick, I can't thank you enough. Your team, Nicholas, uh, it's been a fun journey, and we worked through some things, but we're here today, and uh, it really is a new dawn, and uh, you know, a new beginning for the country to start on. We could not have selected a better partner. Uh, your expertise, technology, uh, is a great fit, so we're very excited to have you in the block. Most importantly, what we prove with this process and uh, what we do is that we can, by bringing you know reliable, affordable energy into the world, we can really raise energy poverty and uh, you know help lift people out. And this will do great wonders for Suriname, all of the people, um, as we really improve uh, quality of life everywhere, not just here but across the globe. We can do it environmentally in a friendly way. Uh, we've designed this where we'll re-inject all the gas, there will be no flaring, uh, a lot of new technology, and uh, we, we trust the operator is going to do a fantastic job. So it really is a new beginning, a great day for Suriname. We're pleased to be a part of it, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Mr. Christman. We will continue the statements, and I will now ask your attention for Mr. Puyan. First, Mr. Master of Ceremony, I would like you to give me a gift, which is to give me your description of the Grand Morgue. <laughs> because it was sure, remarkable, yeah. so I would like to have it in my, in my, in my records. So, uh, because I discovered a lot, including when it was larger and bigger than myself, so it's good. <laughs> uh, so, I'm happy to be uh, here with you today for this uh, very important moment, historic day probably for Serena, but also uh, a very uh, important event for Total Energies and our friends and part of Capachi because it's, uh, it's really uh, 
quite a, a, a lot. It's a very landmark project, I would say. It is politic basis, but we managed to put together. We began this uh, journey in 2019. We made five discoveries. Finally, uh, after discovering gas, we find oil and enough oil, I would say, to launch this oil project. It's a giant project, a giant deep water project, more than ten billion dollars, two hundred twenty thousand barrel per day. So it will be a, one of the largest FPSO we've ever built and designed. Uh, Thirty-two wells, two hundred kilometers of subsea lines. Uh, so it's an impressive project. We have some experience with it, and we are very happy to bring our expertise and our capacity of innovation to Suriname and to the people of Suriname. Uh, I would insist on two point two parts, which in my brief statements. First is taking care of the environment. The motto, the strategy of Total Energies is more energy, less emissions, more cash. It's coming with. Uh, but more production, more energy, it's exactly what we do today. Less emissions, because this project has been designed to uh, minimize the greenhouse gas emissions. The uh, floating unit is all electric. It's uh, without flaring, without flaring, so it's a close flare, zero in flaring. It's designed to lower the emissions under 16, 16 kilograms of CO2 per barrel, which is less than the average of what we have done in our history. Uh, I would say it's also, it will be also a permanent network of detection of methane on board. It's the first time we do that in our company and it will become a standard all over the place. The second aspect of the project is uh, important for the people of Suriname, of course, it's a local content. Out of the $10 billion, we intend to spend here in Suriname more than $1 billion, in one, one point five billion. It will create jobs, direct jobs, 2,000 jobs in the next years, and uh, indirect jobs, around 4,000 jobs, drilling services, uh, logistics, support to operations, and of course, we'll have to train young Surinamese in order to become the future operators on board of the SPSO. You will have to wait a little because today we are in end of 24. Production will come in 28. For sure, I promise to the president 28. Uh, I don't tell you the months because you know it's a long journey. In fact, the project has already started because we ordered the hull of the vessel a few months ago to be sure to secure the hull. And it's being built already in, in Ch on the Chinese yard. So I'm sure and this is on the critical path with her and the, with the vessel. So it's a strong commitment from all of us. And uh, again, and finally, a last word to, uh, I said it, but uh, to say thank you to Anna and all his team. Because we have been the record, the world record, sanctioned last year, end of appraisal last year, October, September, October 23. Sanction September 24, 1st of October 1st, or September 30. I don't know what is the official date, but it's the same. Uh, that's a record, one year from appraisal to, uh, to, uh, to the sanction. I'm very proud of it. It was a challenge I gave to my team, as I've been promising it to the president. But it would have not been possible without our strong support of our partner, Apache, APA, or Apache. I'm always you call Apache, I'm difficult to call Apache. Sorry for that. Uh, and also we got the strong support and uh, uh, Anna told me uh, intense work, constructive work with Satsoli and uh, again it would have been not possible with the technology. So my wish is that we continue like we have done it until sanction. We keep the mindset and the strong spirit of partnership because the hard work was done before but now we have to do other work which is to spend this $10 billion dollars in the budget and in the planning is fundamental for all of us and for the Surinamese people who are expecting of course the benefits of the production uh, but you will have to wait 28 even if in between we create jobs and services and so I'm sure that is, uh, it will create an economic activity here in the country and we are very happy to, to go together. Thank you. May I have your attention for Mr. Anna Jagesu, who will make a statement on behalf of Suriname and the regulator starts only. Thank you, uh, MC, and uh, press, welcome, uh, respect the press that uh, is keeping us honest. Uh, in the past year, 
past year, of course, we have uh, intensely uh, had uh, discussions with uh, Total, but it was always constructive. Many hours were spent, but eventually came to this great moment whereby we announced FID. And it's natural that parties protect their interests. And, and I must say, Total has protected their interests, but Suriname and the regulator has protected our interests as well. And there, somewhere, you find uh, common ground, which was fun. Uh, we want to thank uh, Total uh, for uh, being constructive, and we respect you also for being firm, because you have to always uh, protect your interests. I can tell you now, Suriname will never be the same. And for sure from 28 on, but even before that, because between FIG and the first production, there will be a lot of change as well. You might not know, but in the IMF framework, the oil production from the offshore was not recognized. So that's why it was so strict. But they have promised that from this moment on, this will be incorporated in the macroeconomic framework. Will give a huge relief to the Surinamese country because Suriname can do a lot more for the population of Suriname because of that. The local content will increase strongly. Uh, the last five wells from Total were drilled, were drilled from Suriname and they spent 90 million US dollars in Suriname. In this project, they will drill 32 wells. So you can imagine, and the CEO of Total has uh, mentioned that 1 billion of this 10 billion plus will be spent in Suriname. I must say, I'm very proud of our Surinamese contractors because the port is operating at uh, full capacity and very well. But there was one of the contractors that came to Suriname to see if some jumpers, welding jobs, could be done from Suriname. And their report was everything they saw in Suriname was far above expectations. So we're confident that some welding job will also be done in Suriname. And then, of course, a lot of good, but also bad people, will flock into Suriname. I hope we, Suriname, become better in recognizing the difference between good and bad. But of course, all these persons that will come to Suriname will need a hotel, they will need a cab, they will go to restaurants, they will visit shows, they will buy souvenirs, they will make fancy stuff that you guys make. So this will bring a huge spin-off for our country. And that is all the things that will happen before 28. And then from 28 on, we'll get the direct income from the Gramorgo project. These incomes will be so high that even under poor governance, you will not notice anything. You will notice progress. And with, this is the danger of oil, big revenues from oil. Because you will not see anything in the, in the first 20 years or maybe 40 years. And then, because oil is not yeah. infinite, it runs out and prices fluctuate, sometimes 90, sometimes 9. And then governments come into trouble. And we have a lot of populist examples in the world, but the, the biggest are, of course, Venezuela and Nigeria. And we have a great risk of becoming those as well. So we, have, we will have to have good governance. And I want to emphasize populist, because the oil is not even there, and we are already inundated under uncountable populist statements. You have heard them all. So we have to have good governance. Otherwise, we'll be penniless in the future. And believe me, it's not a possibility. It is a sure outcome, because this is economic principle undeniable economic principle. If you're popular, you set prices at, at, in the market, you will eventually run out of uh, capital, like Venezuela has, with a lot of resources. One of the biggest oil resources in the world. Alcoa has been here for 100 years. Stasuli has been here for 44 years. I cannot speak of Alcoa, but I can speak of Stasuli. We spent more than 4.5 billion. We transferred more than 4.5 billion US dollars to the government. Look around you in Suriname. There is nothing tacit that you can see. 
So I warn, I warn us all, including myself, that we have to take care of the governments. This Grand Borgo project will create mega incomes, 3 billion US dollars in peak years. So it's as big as the GDP of Suriname, as I previously mentioned. And let's not see, after six years or 100 years, when total leaves, that they left nothing behind. Because this project has very good income for Suriname, very, very good. We mentioned between 16 and 26 billion, but with the upsides that we currently see, that could be higher, and with higher oil prices, that is also higher. This has to be very well managed. Even if you make this much income, eventually the oil will run out. Prices might uh, fluctuate a lot, so we have to really care about the good governance. Matide, now a brady day. A gran morgo and begin. Now a musoring, that one day he was in a passing. Stasuri congratulates the Surinamese society with this great and special moment. From my heart, this is for the elderly, elderly in Suriname, which unfortunately we have impoverished with decades of hyperinflation. When a small, small child is born, they look in their mother's eye and they hope and they trust that will make a good society where they can have a good life. And this is what we need to, be, to do. No one needs to be poor anymore with these incomes, but it will, ha will have to be managed. And it has to be good in Suriname. So not only that we above the existing minimum have to live. There are so many incomes in this project, I believe that we are not only above the armoed line, above the sea, but that we have a fair life in Suriname, as well as the president has also said. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but we're not finished yet. There is still one more pleasant announcement to make by Mr. Puyan. We understand that Total Energies and ABA have a very fitting and welcome surprise for Suriname. Mr. Puyan, please reveal it. Yeah, I'm very happy uh, to announce that uh, Total Energies and our partner uh, about Pa. Paco, I mean, Apache, you are right. right? It's like the television in total, you know, I have a problem to change of name, you know, so that's it. Now, we have very pleasure that uh, we will sign today uh, with the Ministry of Health, uh, MOU, with a work program and budget of $13 million to support the mother, newborn, and child health facilities and equipment in the two main hospitals of Paramaribo, providing mother and child services. AZP and s -Land. Since 2023, we have been working with both the public medical community and the Ministry of Health to understand the needs for healthcare. We understand that Suriname has shown in recent years an improvement in maternal, infant, and other five mortality rate, but there is still a lot of work to do. With this uh, agreement, gift, donation, Total Energies and APA, wish to ratify their commitment to healthcare system further by pledging support to the maternal and child health sector in Suriname. All companies love to become citizens of the country in which they establish the projects. We are not good only, I would say, on oil and gas, we are also quite keen to develop our engagement with Suriname society. It's a matter of acceptability and sustainable development. It's not only natural disease of the people, and this commitment to the health of the mother and children of Suriname, uh, in Suriname make me very happy. So, Arthur, our country chair in Suriname, will sign this MOU and will be available to give you more details about the health support. Thank you to all of you for this announcement. <laughs> Very pleasant surprise indeed. May I ask uh, Mr. Arthur Lourdes da Silva and Minister Amaran Ramadin to sign the MOU and from APA, Mr. Scott Grant, Senior Vice President, Corporate Development.
Just to emphasize this surprise is worth thirteen million dollars. That's a one in three. Congratulations. Thank you, gentlemen. And I believe the minister will have to be excused now because he has to run to the parliament. Yes, I was going to ask you something. Uh, yeah, Dear CEO, Mr. Patrick, CEO Alan Jagas and all the press media, I just, I know this is but I would like to, uh, to thank on behalf of uh, our community, but especially our target uh, population, which is uh, included in this uh, MOU, uh, our sincere thanks uh, to, to Total and uh, APA for this donation. We have uh, had intense discussions uh, about uh, potential investment in health, and I think at this uh, at this moment, uh, this uh, MOU and this donation will uh, benefit uh, a very uh, a sensitive uh, population uh, in Suriname. And I can assure you that under this governance and this government, we will execute these uh, projects as mentioned. And uh, thank you once more.
to production, and I think it's for the benefit of the whole country. We'll see beyond if there are more to do. But I would say at this stage, my priority is to deliver by 2018 this project around Mongu and to identify additional resources to be able to connect that to Grand Mongu in the future. Yeah, on the, on the signing bonus, there is a signing bonus when we award blocks. There's a possibility. Uh, but I think the signing bonus here is 13 million will be spent. You know, we, we, we spoke a lot about uh, the Nederlandse Verdragsmiddelen van 7 million. It is that, this is 13 million. And we'll spend that in the healthcare sector by a private company that will speed up uh, the effectiveness of, uh, of the spending and the results. And then secondly, like I, I told uh, you guys before, uh, the IMF framework will be adjusted with the oil income. And if you, you can imagine if we earn 3.6 billion a year, and in the peak years we have 3 billion in addition, they will have to relax that framework. So I would say there is the bonus and the local content will follow as well. I believe that uh, Gloria had a question also. Uh, yes, she, because she is my uh, answer. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Gloria Otsa. Um, congratulations with this FID. A question for the Heer Anand. You keep mentioning about good governance, the importance of that. So what do you need, what do you think is needed to make sure that there's good governance? And also you have mentioned before that our deal was better than Guyana. Is it still the, the case or are there different um, adjustments in this deal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good governance, I can give you a long answer, but I invite you to le read about Singapore, Mr. Lee Kwan, uh, where he took some measures and that is running we have proven economic systems in the world. And if, if someone believes in the world that they can do it differently, it, feel, it feels everywhere. And we can look at the whole of Latin America that, that uh, came to be. So that's the way we should run our country. Uh, people appointed with a profile, not removing directors in the government, because there sh they should be apolitical. Um, and run according to systems. I think Stars will is run according to systems. And we really don't hope that because of the success, our own success, that uh, you know people will try to get involved in the Stars Holy business. So yeah, that's that's good governance. I think uh, the Singapore example is extremely good. And it's nice because the neighbors also try and they make progress. But Singapore also China. So that's a uh, very nice uh, example. So this other question, you should not me, ask, ask me in front of the CEO of Toka, <laughs> yeah, that we have a better deal than in Guyana. But I just want to say in, in Guyana, they have 2% royalty and 50% profit split, no taxes. Um, and here in Suriname, we have like 6.25% royalty, profit split according to a certain formula. So the higher the oil price, the better for Suriname. But the lower the oil price, then the contractor gets uh, protected. And we have a stabilized tax rate of 36%. So you can do the math, and the deal is good. Uh, but of course, everybody has to uh, survive in this partnership. Thank you. I believe that Bisham has a question, then we will get to Sony. And it's fantastic. Goedemorgen. Um, even met betrekking tot uh, de macro-economische, uh, dus, dus het raamwerk met IMF. En we hebben ook nog een schuld herschikking met Oppenheimer. Ik heb begrepen dat in de verlossingen met Oppenheimer is dus afgesproken dat na een bepaalde tijd of een bepaalde hoeveelheid gewonnen op olie, dat er dan inkomsten gaan richting um, Oppenheimer, schuldeisers. Dus een vraag concreet, 2028, u sprak over heel veel geld dat binnen gaat komen. Dat lijkt me een beetje onduidelijk. Ik weet niet precies wat hij bedoelt. Krijgen we toegang tot die uh, final investment decision? Ik zou graag willen inkijken. Ik heb nog meer vragen, maar ik denk dat Kali's moet gaan, moet gaan maken. Ik. Ja, ik heb een vraag. 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 Ik heb een vraag
Yeah. This um, indeed. So the government. I mean, I mean, if you borrow money from me or I borrow money from you, maybe that's a better example because you're rich. Um, and I cannot pay you back right now, but you know that in in four years I'll get uh, an heritage of my uh, uh, you know uh, very wealthy uncle. Then you will make a deal with me that I don't have to pay you back right now, but I have to pay you back. So let's be fair. These are the soft economic systems. That's why Oppenheimer has agreed with the country. If you don't get oil, you can forget. You don't have to pay me. But if you have oil, then you will have to pay me, which is the value recovery instrument. But um, it, it was done quite well because only 30% of only the royalty, 6.25%, will be used to repay this thing. And even the royalties are so huge that within three to four years that uh, VRI will be paid off. So then you still have 70% of the royalty, the profit oil, and the taxes that will still come to Suriname. It, it, these are y really huge uh, streams that uh, we've modeled. I hope it answers your question. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yes. Okay, Zoe. Yes, good morning. My name is Zoe de Koenink. I'm a journalist for Parabota magazine. It's a local magazine here in Suriname. Um, I think my questions, I don't know, are maybe for both of you. Um, I heard you talk about $10 billion. Uh, the president in his speech said more than $10 billion. What's the exact amount of the, of 10 .5. the FID? 10.5. 10.5. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just want to get the numbers right. Uh, and the other question is uh, a rumor that I heard that I would like to uh, present. Um, I heard that... Um, uh, the expenses made by Total Energies for the um, two other wells that are not being developed as of right now in, in Block uh, 58, um, are these expenses also uh, included or will they be, re I think the word is reimbursed in the, into this FID? Is that true or not? The, the over wells? No, the FID is a money that uh, the amount I just gave you is for what we have to spend between today and uh, 28. It includes the cost of the uh, floating units, all the subsea lines, and the 32 new wells that we will drill. Maybe we take back one. Do, yeah, the, 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 can we keep it? No. no, 32 new wells that we will drill, 16 producers, 16 injectors. That represents the global amount of the development. Yeah. So I'm not sure to fully understand your question. It does not. It does not include uh, the costs that have been made by. Um, ah, already do we recover? Do we recover the past costs? Yes. The answer is yes. yes. Sorry. The answer is yes. Yes. Okay. We will recover the past costs. Okay. Thank you. All right. Which is the principle? You know, we have spent more or less one billion dollar, I think, one point four billion dollar until now, for without guarantee of recovering anything. So we spent 1.4 billion between 2019 and 2024, which might be loss. We are lucky because we find oil. So of course, when we produce the oil, we will recover the full spendings, the projects. On the whole block. Uh, the whole block. On okay. the whole block. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, good morning. My name is Gladys Findley for newspaper The West. Um, congratulations. Um, I think everybody here is uh, congratulations to you all. My question is not exactly for you two, but for the director for APA. I wanted to know what originally attracted APA to Suriname in the first place in 2012, because I think we missed it, or I think it's still relevant because you started it. So can you tell us? May I have the microphone? Um, you can have you know, when you look at the Atlantic margin uh, and, and the discoveries that have happened up and down South America as well as uh, the west coast of Africa, uh, geologically it's a great area. And, um, you know, our team of geologists in early 2012 were looking for places. Uh, there was a bid round. Uh, we took the first block, block 53. Um, we drilled a, a well in block 53. 
It was not a discovery, but we did drill into the resource where we did determine that the uh, source rock could produce oil. Uh, so then in 2015, um, when Block 58 uh, was offered, um, at, at the time oil prices were dropping, but we stepped in and bid on Block 58 100%. Uh, we took Block 58. Later that year, there were the discoveries in Guyana, um, and, and kind of the rest is history. But it was really because of the geologic potential, uh, you know, in the deep water, uh, that really sits all up and down the Atlantic margin. So, um, you know. Thank you, Mr. Christman. Uh, who's turn is it now? Yeah. Good morning, Sam Blankendal, ABC News Dienst. Uh, Mr. President, no, Mr. Uh, Jagesser. Not, not, yet. <laughs> not, not yet, not yet, it will <laughs> not come. Yet, not yet. It might come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Jagesser, can you tell us in simple words what happened today? Because uh, not everybody is uh, aware or understand what happened today. Can, can you please say it in Dutch, in simple words? Yes. Uh, what vandaag is gebeurd is FID. Gister hebben we hun field development plan goedgekeurd. Wat FID betekent is dat ze vanaf nu grote sommen geld gaan uitgeven en contracten gaan tekenen. Laten we zeggen ze hadden wat kleine contracten. Ze hebben hul gekocht, hè? dus een, een, een ramp van een schip die al klaar staat en daarop gaan ze module, modules plaatsen en dat wordt de FWSO. Dus ze hadden wat kleine en, en die hul konden ze gebruiken voor een ander project. Maar wat ze nu gaan doen is speciaal voor Suriname. En je begrijpt... De yards in de wereld zijn druk bezet. Dus als je het wil bezetten, ga je moeten een contract moeten tekenen dat je 3 miljard gaat betalen aan die contractor. Dat is vandaag gebeurd. Dus eigenlijk moet je zien, FID is de point of no return. Dus er is de zekerheid voor Suriname, voor iedereen, dat werkelijk deze investeringen nu gaan gebeuren. En dat is vandaag bekrachtigd. Het boren van de bronnen... Het aanleggen van infrastructuur op de bodem van de oceaan, zoals de heer Poinier had gezegd. En het bouwen van de FPSO, dat, dat prachtig mooi groot schip van 60 meter breed en 300 meter lang. lang. Dus dat is vandaag echt gecommitteerd. Point of no return, dat is FID. Is, is het een beetje duidelijker? Ja, oké. Okay. Dus over vier jaar nu, 100% zeker. En met de track record van uh, Total Energy gaan we zeker binnen vier jaar uitkomen. Today, in fact, we will sign three big contracts. One with SBM, the company which will build these floating units. One with SIPEM and one with Technip FMC for all the subsea systems. So, subsea uh, production system, I think, is Technip FMC, SIPM is the lines. So, we'll send these three big contracts, which represent an amount of around $7 billion. So, we are committed, you know, and I can tell you these contractors are also very happy, not only you. <laughs> and then, on the top of it, we'll have to make another, a fourth contract, which will be the drilling rigs, which will come, because we know that there are rigs available, so we'll make a tender for drilling the well. So, it's a commitment. Today, that's a startup, and uh, we are all engaged, in fact. That's why we are celebrating that today. Yes. And then we'll spend the money, and in 28, the production will come. Thank you for the answer. We're talking about oil and gas. Do you have an update about the gas part? In this development, there is some gas. The gas will be fully re-injected, so we preserve the gas. Uh, there is no gas development, because we want zero flaring. So all the gas will be, which will come with the oil will be re-injected in the reservoir. Development for gas, it will be next stage. Honestly, we spend a lot of time and efforts, I can tell you, together to make this day possible in less than a year. So we'll come next time, we'll be happy. But for, for me, my focus is first for the coming year, coming year is to deliver the projects and then other ideas might come. And is Stats only allowed to look for partners for the gas part or it is, uh, on, they are on... Uh, no, no, we are together. But there might be, as you know, there have been some gas discoveries. It's public. 
So we need to think gas, honestly, is more complex because where do you find the gas, I would say, uh, market? Uh, market? Mm -hmm. It should be LNG, so you know it's not easy. You need big volumes of gas. So a gas development, obviously, should encompass not only the Block 58 resource, but probably Petronas has discovered gas, maybe as well on the other side of the border. So we need to think big if we want. So it's why it makes more time. We we'll need to have this project was between Apache, Total Energies, and Satsoli. Yeah. Gas will require more cooperations. But obviously, we have initiated some discussions with people, and we'll see uh, what can be done. Right. Thank you. Um, good morning. I'm Fish Mahani Thomas from Suriname Herald. Um, question. Um, has uh, Total Energy um, having meeting with the Brazilian oil company Petrobras because it is stated that they might have interest also in um, this project? Will they be also probably hopping on the train of Block 58? Is, is that... Um we were together in Rio, Hanan and I, so I think the question is more for Hanan, for Total Energies. Let me be clear, Total Energies is very happy. We have today 50% uh, share, in fact 40%, as uh, Salsoli intends to exercise its option to take 20% of the projects. As operator, I'm very happy to keep my 40%, and I think uh, my dear friend, Sean Christmas, which I'm carrying a little, is also happy. Uh, <laughs> no, so I think then it's not fair. I think Petrobras has expressed interest to, to look to, to uh, Atlantic Basin, and yeah. Suriname is part of the tar targeting countries. But again, this question for me is more for Hanan than for me. Yeah. Would you like to answer it, Hanan? Yeah, I, I can give some answers. So we signed the MOU with uh, Petrobras in uh, Rio, uh, and they're planning to drill in front of the top of South America as well. So we'll need to co cooperate. Uh, Petrobras is a brilliant technical company, as we all know. They have a lot of uh, records on their name, uh, drilling records and uh, production records. Uh, so we're happy to cooperate with them. And uh, in the offshore, there are a couple of blocks that people are looking for a farm and partner. So. Uh, you have heard from Total, they're not looking for a partner in 58. So, but in other blocks, uh, it could be. And you never know what happens in the future. I mean, I think if you, if you think strategically, the biggest neighbor of Suriname is Brazil. And we should uh, keep them uh, as close friends because they can buy a lot of stuff from us. Maybe in, even in the future, gas. Because you know what is happening in uh, South America now. Eh? So it's a huge drought. Their hydropower is not there anymore. They have to import huge amount of uh, gas. So we can see how we can develop that story. But it will take time, like uh, my colleague has said. Total Energy is the first large, first, the number three in the LNG market. We are controlling 10% of the world market, so we ca are quite good at LNG. If there is a possibility, don't worry, we'll look at it. Okay. Are there any more questions? Uh, Ant Kuiper. Can the, mic the microphone is coming, Ank. The mic oh, is coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, how uh, is Staats only doing by uh, gathering the money to participate for 20%? Yeah, so we, we fortunately, our CFO saved some money uh, on behalf of, of our company. So uh, the first payment is secured. And the second payment, uh, we have some time to arrange that. As you know, we uh, plan to issue a bond again in Suriname. And hopefully also the diaspora uh, in the world can uh, participate in that. So that's the second one. We have talked to 25 banks already. They're uh, very interested. And of course, like my friend uh, Javier uh, Riello has uh, told us, when Total is on board some, somewhere, then it gives confidence to the bank, banks. So uh, we are uh, confident that we can finance the 20%. Yeah, I think the job for Anand and uh, the CFO will be easier from today than it was before. <laughs> When you commit, like a company like us, we commit several billions, people are, the bankers, they, they like to, to, to join us on our project. So I'm sure 
That is why we agree, because we want our partner to be comfortable as well. It's very important for, for us. We agree to give, uh, to extend the deadline, I would say, for Statsoli to come with a full financial package until summer 25, because we want to Statsoli to have a good chance to have a, a good, uh, I would say, a good financial package. It's important for us as well. Um, Mr. Jagesha, you just mentioned that Start only secured the first uh, payment or investment. Could we know how much that is? Uh, it's a significant amount, but uh, it's, it's at, in the bank and uh, we'll be able to pay it, yes. So if you see 10.5 billion, then uh, you know 20%, you can calculate how much that is. And there will be installments. Okay, maybe I can, I, Agnes, can I tell the first amount? <laughs> uh, which is uh, 175 million. Yes. Um, tijdens de presentatie van de president en ook van u, uh, meneer um, Jagesser, is er vaker aangehaald de regulator staatsolie. In dit kader van zo'n groot project is er nog verstandig dat staatsolie dus doorgaat als regulator en operator of zo dus we moeten gaan richting het opsplitsen van die twee zaken, want we kunnen gaan richting een conflict of interest nu. Dat is één. Het volgende heeft te maken met, um, oh ja, ik vind het jammer dat iemand van de regering hier is, over local content en controle. We hebben zelf moeite om bijvoorbeeld op het stuurmeer cyanide te gaan tracen. En de regering praat over controle op zee en dat we dat goed moeten doen. Hoe is dat in place en local content, waar is die wet? Want hoe, wat is local content volgens de wet? Hoe moet je dat definiëren? Want ik weet dat Guyana ermee struggelt nu. Wat is local content voor Suriname per wet? Ja, dus uh, de, de rol van de regulator. Uh, we hebben studies gemaakt hè, van de systemen in de wereld en wie succesvol is en wie niet. Uh, een van de meest succesvolle systemen is Noorwegen. Daar is alles opgesplitst. Maar het is niet vanaf het begin geweest. Het is na 20, 25 jaar is, is het allemaal opgesplitst nadat er ervaring en genoeg kader was opgebouwd. Het andere mooie systeem in de wereld of gerespecteerd systeem in de wereld is van Petronas. Waar de regulator inderdaad in Petronas zit. Nou, dit is het probleem. Als we naar school gaan en we leren uit economieboekjes theorieën, dan moet je ze wel kunnen toepassen in je land. En als je een gebrek hebt aan kader, dan ga je een systeem moeten opzetten waar je kader deelt. En dat doen we nu bij Staatsolie. We hebben een Chinese muur, hè? dus één functionaris die verantwoordelijk is voor de regulator, heeft geen bemoeienis, bemoeienis met de commerciële uh, tak van Staatsolie. Ja? En zelfs als het op regeringsniveau zou zijn, uh, Petrobras, Brazilië heeft het gescheiden. Desalniettemin kreeg Petrobras bijvoorbeeld alle contracten of voorkeur bij de contracten. Dus het is, het is het, je kan zeggen, je, je hangt het Noorweegse systeem aan. Ik ga je zeggen wat hele grote deskundigen daarover, daarover hebben gezegd. Dan zou je 5 miljoen Nooren moeten hebben in je land. Want het gaat om een attitude. Een Noor betaalt graag belasting. Ik weet niet of u graag belasting betaalt. Maar ik weet dat een heleboel mensen niet graag belasting betalen. Dus als je een systeem gaat implementeren, moet je land daarvoor geschikt zijn. En geen kwaad wordt over de contractors gesproken. Het is ook niet beneficial voor ons dat we een zwak instituut hebben. Waar, laten we zeggen, de mensen niet goed worden betaald en ze weglopen. Waardoor de contractors met een zwak instituut moeten onderhandelen. Daar kunnen ze in principe geen goed gebruik van maken. Maar ze worden ook niet goed geserviced. Een lang antwoord, we kunnen hier lang over praten. Maar dit zijn de twee grote voorbeelden in de wereld, Petronas en Noorwegen. En bij Noorwegen benadruk ik, het is niet vanaf dag één geweest. Het is na 20, 25 jaar dat men begon de zaken te splitsen. Kijk, de, de moderne, de westerse wereld wil ons graag doctrines uh, voorschrijven. Ik bedoel, wie heeft zoveel CO2 uitgestoten jarenlang in de wereld? En nu hebben we de kans om uh, wat, wat betere kleren te kopen en een beter leven te hebben. En dan komt die doctrine van ja, je mag niet 
Maar waarom stop jij niet in Noorwegen met zoveel olieproductie? Je bent toch een rijk? Dus laten we die discussies niet hebben. Ook die milieuactivisten, nu reizen ze economy class. Vroeger kwamen ze gewoon in business class om ons te vertellen. Dat we minder moesten uitstoten. Enfin, het is een, uh, het is een moeilijke discussie. En je tweede vraag? Ja. Oké. Okay. Bisham, ik ga je zeggen, het is simpel. Hè? Dus weet je, hier maken wij ook als, als land of als landen... We maken ons het ongelooflijk moeilijk. We gaan een complexe policy maken. We gaan een complexe wet maken. Toch, we gaan maandenlang erover doen. En wat jij zegt, als die controle er niet is, dan gaat het toch, mensen gaan merken, hey, ze checken dat ding niet. Toch? In onze production sharing contract staat, staan de magical words. Which is, als goederen en diensten en personeel tegen een competitieve prijs en kwaliteit in Suriname gesorgd kunnen worden, moet je het doen. En staatsolie heeft natuurlijk staatsolie, en daar werd deze discussie over splitsing. Staatsolie heeft de, de mensen, en we hebben met totaal over de vloer gerold, hè, want ze waren ze borden vanuit Trinidad. Maar op het moment dat ze begonnen te boren uit Suriname, die liked het. Die zeiden, my, my god, these guys are good. Shell heeft een bron uit Suriname ge, geboord. En zij renken hun bronnen als in de hele wereld. En het was one of the best service wells in the world. Uit Suriname. Dus hebben we local content wet nodig om allerlei gekke dingen te gaan doen. Om te zeggen dat 51% moet, uh, weet je, van Surina Surinamers zijn. Nee, als er 99% Surinamers werken in dat 51% buitenlands bedrijf, is het goed want we hebben die kennis en know-how nodig van die buitenlandse bedrijven. En tot nu toe hebben we het keurig gedaan. Weet je wat het probleem is van deze olieindustrie? 24-7. Dus als je zaterdagavond op een feest bent en er is een compressor stuk op dat boorschip en ze zeggen je moet naar, naar de luchthaven om met de helikopter dat ding te gaan repareren, kan je niet zeggen mijn tante is jarig, mijn favoriete tante. Dit is deze industrie. Het is 24-7, you have to service it. If you have that attitude, you're a long way there. En onze Surinaamse bedrijven, veel van ze, omdat ze ook voor ons hebben gewerkt. En ze weten, op Saramaka, we maken geen grappen. Als je niet levert, ben je eruit. Als je grappen maakt met personeel die zich niet houdt aan drugs- en alcoholregelingen of aan veiligheid, ben je eruit. En die attitude is er nu in Suriname. Weer een te lang antwoord. Ja. Ja. Yes. Milieucontrole optie. Kijk, we hebben NIMOS, NMA nu. En we gaan in die local content stimulus, samen met Total ook en samen met APA Corporation, gaan we proberen NIMOS ook, uh, laten we zeggen, te, te helpen om groter te worden. Ik denk niet dat staatsolie alles moet controleren. Toch? We moeten een veiligheidsinstituut hebben en we moeten een milieuinstituut hebben, zoals men dat in het buitenland heeft. En we gaan Nimos helpen. En ze doen echt hun best. Ik hoop dat dat ook... Uh, yes. All right. Uh, tijd voor de laatste vraag. We take, we'll take a last question, yes. Gloria, and then we'll finish. Um, you told us, or you just stated, that you were going to educate young Sunan people to be able to work. When is this going to start? And Mr. Anand, are we ready? The, yeah, it's, it's starting now. In fact, we intend to uh, recruit the first batch of 150 uh, future workers. And it's a long training, you know, because it's not only uh, in classroom, it's more on the job training. So, you know, we are operating many FPSOs around the world. And I think we will uh, train them and invite some of them on some of our units. So, we will uh, look for 150 uh, young, or not young, I mean, uh, I obviously say young, but because it's a priority, but, uh, eh? and we, men and women, by the way, because on FPSO, you can work, not only men, but also women can come. We have that uh, all over the world, and uh, it will be good, by the way, one day to organize a nice trip for you, uh, media, on the FPSO, either in Brazil or in Angola. So that you understand what it is. It's quite spectacular, but I think it's part of the education, I think, for everybody to understand what is the magnitude of these investments. It's a huge 
projects, huge installations, and we welcome to have young Surinamese joining us. Thank you. Men and women. <laughs> Alan? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen him in, uh, at Petronas and also at uh, your FPSO in Angola. Uh, quite some women. Uh, because the women are at the university. If you go in our university, you will, you will see it by yourself. Um, are we ready? I think you're never ready. I mean, we organized this uh, whole day, and our people have done a stellar job. But all the, the nails that fall in between, the people pick it up. So that's the way we, we should go here. Again, you can prepare. You can over-prepare. I think, in general, we're ready to go. And on our flight, you know, because of the motivation and the drive, uh, because the project will progress anyway, we, we will adjust where necessary. Good right. to be rich uh, as a country after uh, so much poverty. All right, thank you. I believe that this concludes our Q&A. Mr. Puyan and Anand, very thank you very much. Uh, the press or our press uh, people, please note that there will be unfortunately no opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interviews because the program. However, Mr. Jagesser will be available the next coming days for media, yeah, in <laughs> Dutch for media interviews. So if you would like an interview or have him in your program, please contact us at Corporate Communication and we will make it work. So, uh, it, was, it has been a pleasure to have you all here. Uh, once again, thank you very much for this uh, splendid, uh, how you call it, uh, atmosphere. Members of the press, you will get a press release, but please also check the press release of Total Energies and APA, which is going to be released now, or has already been released as our press release. On your way out, you will get the fact sheet, and there is something... Uh, uh, a snack box for you guys also. So thank you all very much for this wonderful moment and until the next milestone. Thank you. I, I, I want your fact sheet. Give me.